Good evening. My name is Victoria Jeffries and I am the Regional Admissions Representative for Johnson and Wales University. I do want to thank you for joining us for the Heron School of Art and Design at IUPUI's information session. As a facilitator, I start and stop you and share a couple of slides. I don't want to take up a lot of time. I do want to let you know that you will not have audio, you won't have a camera, you won't have a microphone, but you can post your questions in the Q&A portion of the webinar, which is at the bottom of your screen. I do also wanna let you know if you do miss some information, not to panic, within a week, the recording of this webinar will be on our website, which is inacac.org under virtual college exploration. And then last thing I want to say, is there's another week and a half of information sessions for universities across the US and a couple from um, that are abroad that you can sign up for more sessions. So please take some time once you finish with this this evening, explore our website and see if you can sign up for some more sessions. But in the meanwhile, learn about the Heron School of Arts and I will see you at the end of our session. Thank you. Um, welcome everyone. I'm going to start sharing my screen. And we'll go back a slide. Sorry, I'm going. So today um, we have an information session and we are here in School of Art and Design at IUPUI. And I just want to introduce everyone with me. First off, we have, and if if the panelists wouldn't mind unmuting and just saying hi really quick so your face pops up. First is Reagan. He, you teach furniture design, is that correct? You can uh -huh. I teach um, furniture design and a lot of first year uh, studies uh, classes, 3D, uh, 2D, studio technology. And I've been at Heron for 10 years. Thank you. And another faculty member, Liva Wilcox. Hi, I am um, in art education and I have been here for a few months, but I'm loving it. So um, I'm looking forward to being here if you choose to come. And finally, we have a current student, Via. Hi, I'm Via. I'm a sophomore. I had Reagan as a professor actually for, I think, I don't remember what the class was. I think it was just like. It was so memorable. Uh, it was like studio. I can't remember what it's called. It was uh, building and making. Building and making. Yeah. And I'm studying to be an art therapist. So I'm majoring in ISP in painting and sculpture. And ISP is? ISP is you kind of pick two majors or two focuses. So you pick two things you're really interested in. I've never done sculpture before, actually. I just started the semester. But I wanted to integrate one 2D and one 3D medium together. So you can choose whatever you want, really. That's great. Great, thank you guys. So if you have questions for them, please put them in the Q&A and we will answer them as we go. And who are you? Oh, I'm Jessica Gendron and I am the admissions coordinator at Heron School of Art and Design. So if you have any questions about how to apply, how to submit your portfolio, um, my information is given to you. So we're just gonna move on. Um, so in this presentation, we're going to talk about everything Heron and IUPUI and Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So at Heron School of Art and Design, we value community, um, value creativity, and its ability to solve problems, as well as to create and engage communities. So at Heron, we have 650 students and 42 full-time faculty. 90% of those are undergraduate and 10% are graduate students. And we have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio. We get a lot of questions about scholarships and financial aid. At Heron, we have incoming student scholarships as well as scholarships that come from IUPUI. If you're outside of Indiana, we have the Midwest Student Exchange Program, which is a 55% reduction in um, your tuition. So it's really close to that in-state tuition. And uh, just a side note, in, um, the scholarship deadline for incoming Heron students is February 1st. So if you're interested, please get all your materials in before then. So a little bit about our history. Um, Heron opened as the John Heron Institute in 1902. And it was also um, created with a museum that is now new fields, but formal, formerly the Indianapolis Museum of Art. And we're still kind of have a relationship with them. 
And in 1969, Heron and other professional schools joined to make IUPUI. And in the building that we are in now, um, was built in 2005 in our newest building, um, the Eskenazi Fine Arts Center that is housed on Indiana Avenue and also houses our sculpture and ceramics programs um, was built in 2013. So Heron is a school at IUPUI and it offers a lot of resources. There's, it has a huge institutional, a large institutional research background with 30,000 students from 144 countries and all 50 states. A lot of numbers, but another number is there are 450 majors, 11 of which come from Heron, and um, sorry, 100 plus minors that are completely open to all Heron students. So that's something just to keep in mind when thinking about coming to Heron, is you have that extra step beyond just art school. There's that research institution within all these other fields. <clears throat> So just a graphic of where we're at within all of IEPUI. So from 2012 to 2019, um, Heron earned the Higher Education Excellence in um, Diversity Award. And being affiliated and being a part of IUPUI, we have all of these great opportunities um, and diverse centers and councils that you have so many opportunities to be a part of. Um, Via, are you in any clubs or anything like that? Um, I'm vice president of the art therapy club. This semester we kind of had to put it on hold because of COVID. We're doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes like trying to get more books in the library on the topic of art therapy and learning more about the master's program. But yeah, and then I'm in a volunteering club through the honors college. What else? I'm in a few clubs through the Honors College, but it's hard to keep track this semester because most of them are on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's a great point. Our Honors College deadline is November 15th, and it's a, it's a great thing to be a part of. It opens new scholarship opportunities and opportunities to connect with students across campus. So that's a great thing to bring up, Via. Okay, we'll move. Um, I don't love to read slides, but I think this is really important and is valued at Heron and at IUPUI and Heron Black Lives Matter, and we reject all words, actions, and deeds of racism that indicate otherwise, and we celebrate our differences and are committed to making you feel welcome here. So we offer um, 11 programs, and two of those diff degrees that are not BFAs are our BA in Art History and our BAE in Art Education. Libo, would you just give us a quick kind of elevator on uh, our education? Sure. Um, so we are the largest provider of um, undergraduates um, in the state. And so we have a pretty large program of people who are going into um, becoming art teachers and they're from K through 12, but also people are interested in engaging in educating in the community and in museums. And so um, if you're interested in teaching in any way, shape or form, don't hesitate to put a question in the um, question and answer function and I'll be able to ask, I guess, answer anything that you might have, please. Yeah, thank you, Libba. And our nine other degrees come from our BFAs. Um, Reagan, will you give us a little elevator pitch about just some of the most popular majors or one you wanna speak about? Well, I always wanna speak about um, uh, furniture design, which is I'm, I'm teaching back in that studio now, but um, I, what I like about the, the, the access to majors is that even if you're on a track, you can begin to take classes in other areas. Uh, one of our, our largest populated majors, uh, actually two of them are uh, visual design communication and um, uh, I'm sorry, drawing and illustration. <laughs> um, um, and drawing and illustration is, is fairly new uh, as a um, conglomerate at our school, uh, but it's, it's, it's taken on a lot of traction and has begun to really uh, pump out some interesting, um, some interesting graduates. But I mean, I, I think it's the, the diversity of the things that you can take. Uh, this is a long elevator ride, right? Uh, the, the, the diversity that um, of classes that you can take is, is broad. And so you can try things out and uh, we, we, we uh, you may be good at 
these other things, but you'll take a, an elective class and something that maybe you're not very good at taking a chance and uh, something wonderful will come out of that. So anyway, um, we're at the hundredth floor, I guess now. So yeah, thank you, Reagan. So yes, we do offer nine different studio areas and they are all very different and have their own little communities, which is really one of the great things about here. So these are just our two master's programs or our three master's programs. We also offer five minors. And uh, as Via had mentioned before, we have a pre-art therapy certificate and she is in the club of that, or you're the president, is that right? Vice president, but Vice. yeah. <laughs> um, so can you talk a little bit about what the art therapy certificate is? What type of classes do you take? Is there a specific class for art so therapy? There's one specific art therapy class. Um, there's only one for undergraduates. The rest are when you move on to graduate school. And then you take basically a combination of 18, I believe, studio hours. And then you take 15, I believe, psych um, credits. And then it's only, I think, one more class to get a psych minor. So I'm doing a psych minor with my certificate. So. Yeah, it's really cool. You get a lot of options as to what psych classes you want based on your interests and what art classes you want. There's really no like specifications. So you can do whatever you want. Yeah, so like with your degree via, you're using your studio classes for that qualification on your certificate. Yeah, right? so it works both ways, yeah. Add on, yeah. And that's how a lot of our minors and certificates work is it's like two extra classes to get that art history minor. So. We do encourage people to at least, you know, see your first year, what your interests are, and maybe tack on one of those in your second. So um, I think it would be great to hear from all of the panelists about why art and design school. But uh, for me, and what I love to tell people is the, about the community at Heron, which I'm sure we will hear about again, and also how Heron allows students to creatively pursue passions and solve problems and really challenge the way that you think about the world. Um, so I do kind of want to go through here and why should these students choose art and design school? Libba, would you mind giving a brief answer? Sure, um, this is something that I've thought about a little bit. Um, I have had the luxury maybe of being able to be in colleges of education and then also in schools of art and design. And it's feels so much better if you are creative, if you are interested in making or seeing the world or challenging the world in different ways. I think that there's something really beautiful about being with artists and being able to kind of problem solve and learn from and be inspired by artists. Um, schools of education are also nice, but they are very structured. It feels like you're going back to school and here it is really about kind of following where you want to be and learning and digging and just working. Um, there's something about being around artists that really inspires you to make the best and to become the best person. Um, that's a long elevator ride too. Sorry. That's wonderful. That's great. Reagan, will you, why art and design school? Um, well, I mean, let's face it, art and design school is kind of a hard get uh, with parents. I mean, I'm, um, I'm much, I'm probably your parents' age or older. And I remember trying to convince my mother and um, my father who didn't live with us uh, that this was going to be a great idea. I was going to you know, light the world on fire. Um, what I did was make a, make a career for myself uh, as a, a, a graphic designer. That's what they called it when I graduated at least. Um, and I had, a, I mean, I've, I've worked in, in creative fields my entire life. Um, and so anybody who kind of tells you otherwise uh, doesn't think broad enough. Um, I think one of the, the great things about art and design schools too, especially at Heron, and you'll hear me say this over and over, um, is that you're being taught by practicing artists and designers. Um, that it's not something I used to do, it's something I do. Um, I teach a, a Tuesday, Thursday uh, furniture design class and I was in my studio all morning and I get in my car and I'm already covered in uh, sawdust and metal shavings uh, to meet my students. So, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's kind of an extension of that conversation. So, um, yeah, I think that, um, again, it's a hard get, it's a hard conversation to have, but there are, there, there, it's, it's really enriching um, the life that you can make for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And that there are opportunities 
for careers and furthering your education within the arts. So absolutely. Via, do you have a quick answer for why you chose art and design school? I would love to hear why you chose to co go to art and design school. Yeah, so my sophomore year of heart, high school was the first year I'd ever done anything related to art. So I was like already 15 at the time. And I wasn't really passionate about school at all, but getting into an art class like made me more passionate about really everything. So I started doing way better in my classes, taking harder classes, pushing myself. So I've just discovered like how far I can go by being creative and being around creative people. And I think it's really cool to be in the city in Heron because there's not just the people in your school, but you can go out and like there's so many museums and so many artists practicing in the city. So I really enjoyed that when I came down to visit the first time. Yeah, that's an amazing answer. I, I couldn't have said it better. Move on. Um, so kind of the outline of what an undergraduate career might look like at Heron is that first year developing the language and learning kind of the basics, taking that 2D design, 3D, 3D design, that introduction to drawing class, and then as you kind of rise through your years at Heron, you kind of narrow in that focus to what your interests are, all finalizing in a final thesis show or capstone project. So um, we really give you the skills from basic to specific here. Study abroad. Obviously, right now we do not have these options. I want to go to the next slide because the pictures are better. Um, but we have study abroad options in Eastern Europe, Asia, Italy, um, really, I think Northern Europe too. The options for studying art and design abroad at Heron are limitless, really. And um, I studied abroad myself when I went to Heron, and it was a great experience, and I got credit for it too. Um, so it's it's a it's a great thing, and we're really excited to start those programs again when it's safe for us to do so. So faculty, um, just like Regan said, all of our faculty are practicing artists, art educators, art historians. They're all doing what they love and teaching it as well. Um, and I, all of these artists are showing and you know, just being in that professional world as an artist. And for me, I don't know how you felt, Via, but as a student, I looked up to that and I saw kind of an end game there. Maybe not everybody wants to teach, but um, people who are pursuing their passion and are able to, um, you know, make ends meet. Um, do you, does anyone have anything they want to say about I think, that? Um, I mean, like, <clears throat> This is just a t-shirt, but like I think it's more than just make ends meet. I think that you can make you can make a real life um, and own a house, and it's not it's not this thing where I live in a you know maybe I do wish I lived in some sort of like a loft apartment in a, in a building downtown, but I live in a regular neighborhood, and I you know my kids are in school, and I go to soccer practice. It's um, but the, all that's mixed in with um, this really amazing job of both making art and. Uh, teaching other people how to make art. Yeah, absolutely. Via, did you want to hop in there? Um, I would just say, like, even meeting the art therapy professor, we had a time where she invited us and some other students to uh, visit her studio where she actually practices with her clients. And I think it's really cool that teachers have, like, that engagement with their students here. Like, a lot of people I've how does professors like really do care about you? They're not just gonna like pass you by like a high school math teacher would. They actually wanna engage with you and like they're interested in what you wanna learn about and they'll they'll help you get there, so. That's a great point, Via. Something really nice to hear. All right, moving on. So um, I think the facilities at Heron are incredible. We have two buildings, like I mentioned before. We have Eskenazi Hall and um, Eskenazi Fine Arts Center, which is our sculpture and ceramics building. Um, usually, not during the time of COVID, but our students usually have 24-7 um, access, and there are tons of studio spaces. A huge auditorium where students usually take art history classes or other classes are held in there, and an, an amazing library. I always tell people that, you know, other IU-affiliated schools want to borrow our books from the Heron Library because we have a really great selection. 
and amazing clubs who want to get more books in there. Um, we have our Think It Make It lab with 3D printers, um, laser engravers, a CNC router. So that's always a great um, addition to, to um, some work. And galleries that are free and open to the public with sometimes student work, alumni work, and also just practicing artists from around the world. So um, we also usually have visiting artists and designers that are sponsored. Um, any notable uh, visiting artists, Reagan, that you can remember that aren't on this list? I know I'm just calling you out on this one. Okay, I'm used to it um, from last time. <laughs> um, so the the woman that's that's uh, pictured, I'm going to butcher her last name, but you can see my last name is probably butchered often too. Cynthia uh, Dagno, she um, an amazing. Well, she recently moved to um, Baltimore, but she's a was a full-fledged New York artist, uh, amazing type situation. And um, one of the great experiences I had with her was that I was just kind of walking around during a break in my class and she was in the studio, in the, in the larger gallery setting up her show and they waved me in and, you know, she just couldn't get to talk to people and um, just was, was interesting, wanted to discuss her work and was talking sort of just about her studio practice. And I was, you know, no different than what we kind of do in our own classrooms. Another one was uh, Tom Sachs was uh, really amazing. I don't know if you, if you know his work, but um, his, his partner's family lives here. Um, um, and so he's here a lot. Um, he, they, they got him to the school, but his work is, is, is pretty groundbreak, groundbreaking, so. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember as a student at hearing feeling like artists were more readily available to see in person going to those lectures and events. Um, I want to say something real quick too is um, I did a uh, artist in residency after my grad school uh, situation with uh, Mary Reed Kelly and Patrick Kelly and to get those to see those guys. Um, I don't know if you guys know what art 21 is. It's a it's a PBS series art in the 21st century, but it, it, it highlights the the best of the best of what's going on right, right now. And it's, it was interesting to see those guys. Uh, they weren't even married at the time. And um, um, just to see their, their career grow and have that conversation again with them, so. Yeah, yeah. if you haven't checked out Art 21, you should um, just as a cultural phenomenon. <laughs> I guess it's amazing. So there are some, oh, I, what is the right word for this? Some stopping points at Heron. Um, what's the better word for that? Um, gates, like mid-level review in your thesis show that um, really make you kind of feel like a community and you can commiserate over how nerve-wracking it is for mid-level review or getting ready for your thesis show. Via, have you had your mid-level review? Or are you getting ready for it? Where are you at? Oh, no, I'm just starting my sophomore year. So yeah, that's probably not going to happen until next semester, the yeah. following year, I believe. That's a great point. So it's in the middle of your career at Heron, and um, it's a great opportunity to get feedback on your work um, and, and everybody just kind of checking in with you for where you're at. And again, we have student-led organizations as well as 500 plus that IUPUI offers. So you don't just have to stay at Heron if you're interested in gaining some more community. It's definitely outside of there too. So instead of me just talking about Indianapolis, can we just talk about Indianapolis experiences? Um, I love the food in Indianapolis. Um, it's a really great location that cultivates art. Um, and I think the statistic on here is the 40, 440 million generated annually by the arts industry in Indianapolis. So it's thriving here. Um, does anyone wanna talk about Indianapolis and kind of how that goes together with Heron? Uh, I'll I can take, talk about I'll take it. Oh, go ahead, Libba. You're new. You can. I was, I, my um, biggest thing is just moving back. I have lived outside of the Midwest for a few years and then I was able to come back and I am just blown away by kind of the quality of food, the experiences that you can have, um, the cultural trail that goes through Indian, being able to walk and be outside and just be able to be a part of the art community, uh, um, to be able to see museums, to be able to get to things. 
um, I'm blown away with what's here. Um, having lived away for a while, this is really nice. Sorry, Reagan, if you no, can give it, this Oh, no, it's a great. Um, I, I just think that's nice that yours is a, like a brand new take on that. And I've been here 10 years and we moved here from the coast of Maine. Um, and we lived in Rhode Island before that. And we could see the water from not, not great views. <laughs> you know, like I'm saying like a little pond, um, but we lived uh, by the water in both of those places. And um, the, the job at Heron came up and it was like such a great experience. Um, and, but we were a little bit nervous about what, what might be available here. Uh, we had been here uh, many, many years ago. And it's a really thriving city. And um, not only are there fine artists, there's, there's a, a big design scene here. There is a uh, artist manufacturing and, and fabrication type situations popping up all over the place. I mean, who doesn't love food? But, you know, um, uh, um, it's also close to um, other larger cities. And one of the reasons we moved here was, was to be able to get to places quickly. So uh, Chicago's and um, Cincinnati's and that sort of thing. Um, I, I think it's a super easy place to live. Uh, it's very inexpensive. Uh, you had mentioned the bike trails. You know, I ride to work um, on occasion when the weather's nice um, on my new bike. And um, I don't know, I love it here, you know, and I gotta tell you, um, I'm hard to impress, so. What about you, Via? I know you'd mentioned it earlier that you were, you were a fan or that was something that had drawn you to Heron. Yeah, I'm not really a city person, to be honest. Uh, I like the outdoors, but I feel like we're just, the city's not like as big and, and as daunting as like Chicago or something. And also it's so close to like Brown County and stuff. I can, there's an easy like getaway if you need one from the city, but I've actually really enjoyed being here. There's plenty of like, I don't know, there's plenty of space here and it's really fun to like go to opportunities when they were open before, like first Friday, one of my first weeks here. Um, some people I had met in Bridge, we we just decided to go and that was one of the first times I got to hang out with friends outside of school. And it's just, there's so much to do here all the time. And it always feels relatively safe and it's not like scary walking around the streets because it it's like a very homey city, which I never thought I would find. <laughs> Um, Via, before you um, mute yourself, will you tell us what uh, Summer Bridge is? Oh, yeah. So Summer Bridge, um, I think it used to start two weeks before uh, classes, but for me, it started one week before classes, and uh, we got to move into our dorms early if we were living in dorms. If you weren't, I believe you just uh, commuted, and you you had a group of people, and they would group of students who are incoming and a group of faculty who are helping you basically get acclimated to like the campus and the school in general. So you'd tour like the facilities before anyone was there. They'd show you where the different offices off camp off campus were and uh, off Heron's campus. So you would learn like the campus center. They would show you the different sculptures around and even stuff just around Indianapolis in general. So it was really nice like it helped me the friend group I have I wouldn't have without going to bridge it really helps with making friends and also um I would have been so <laughs> I would have been so nervous the first day of school just showing up and not having gotten to be there like a week early so I definitely recommend it it's not that much more expensive if you're living in a dorm because they prorate it so I definitely recommend it yeah Br summer bridge is a great experience so thank you for speaking to that and we're also uh, we're bringing up our our numbers in Summer Bridge, so there's there's going to be more sections available and, and uh, a wider variety of faculty teaching that. Another thing is you get to register for classes earlier than everyone else, which is really nice. Yeah, so you get those time slots that you uh, really want. That's a great point. Uh, so we've mentioned careers uh, a few times um, when we're talking about faculty. You know, when you're choosing art and design school. Um, there are, I think, 56 careers on this page. I, I don't, it was like a week or so when I counted, so I could be wrong. Um, but these are just a few of those options. Um, people go off and do a ton of different things. So I just think keeping your mind open and, you know, thinking about 
what the end game is is important, but also kind of going with the flow. Um, can you guys speak to any careers that, or we can start with Regan, any careers that you've seen some of some of the students get or internships, really anything career wise? I know that's a big ask. Oh, you're muted. Good thing. Um, <laughs> lucky you guys are muted finally. Um, I, I think um, one of the misconceptions of art school is that we're only training people to go to grad school. And that's not, uh, I mean, that, that is an option here at Heron and, that, and we don't, we wouldn't discourage that. And um, as a, I mean, I, I write letters of recommendation for grad school all over the place, but we're really preparing you to get a job out of, out of as an undergraduate, recently graduated undergraduate student. Um, I was surprised to see in the last couple of years um, how many uh, small furniture design um, studios have popped up. Um, there's a group of um, Heron alumni. I don't think that they started it, but uh, there's several that work there that that travel to uh, overseas and to China. They they design here and they're manufacturing there, and um, they're doing quite well. Um, um, art therapist. I I don't know that much about that, but um, I was I was friends with um, some of the former art therapy um, faculty and um, this is a big medical town and um, there are so there are, are um, jobs attached to that like art therapist and um, and designers for um, all sorts of things medical um, uh, medical literature um, interior designing um, spaces and that sort of thing. Yeah, that was a great lead into kind of the next where our hair and alumni get work at. So obviously there are some large names like Adobe and IBM and things like that. But like Regan mentioned, there are some there are some smaller people who have be or not smaller people, but some smaller organizations and small groups of people who have come together to, you know, make some great things. So it doesn't have to be these huge Eli Lillies. Um, either, but it is nice that some of our students have gotten some really large jobs at some of these pretty large places. So, um, so if you're interested in applying to Heron School of Art and Design, the first step is is to apply to IUPUI. Um, that is where you will get your overall ad admit, um, and then you apply to Heron with an artistic portfolio, which is 10 images and a 250 word to 500 word essay, and that's open-ended. So I always kind of instruct people, talk about your experience with art, um, what would Heron, you know, how would Heron influence your path to where you wanna be and all of those great things. Um, and then the other thing you need to think about is where you're gonna live if you choose to come to IUPUI in Heron. We offer, um, they're in the Riverwalk Apartments is a section called Heron House where Heron students live together. It's a great place to make friends, live with people who you might be in the same classes with. Um, did you live on campus, Via? Yeah, I didn't live in the Heron House. I lived in um, Tower, yeah. which is like an old hotel that got converted into dorms, which is cool because you have your own bathroom and everything. But it was a fun experience. Um, we got to meet people that weren't all art majors. So if if you're not uh, having fun with the art kids, you can you can definitely meet some new people and you can join. I joined the student council they had there for that year and it was just a fun way to organize events and stuff. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, when I went to IUPUI, I lived in Ball Hall. So I kind of got the opposite experience of UVA. Um, <laughs> but it was still awesome to be around people who weren't necessarily art majors and build a, build a community there too. Um, so those are all just some things to think about when um, thinking about Heron and IUPUI. So I think I have one more slide and then we're done. Yes. So we'll see if we have any questions. I'll stop sharing my screen. No questions. And share the screen again. Can you? That yeah. last slide? Yeah. Do you like this image? Well, um, uh, these two folks were in my bridge, the first bridge class, um, and are now married. Really? Together. So 
you can uh, here and, here and learn about art and maybe meet somebody cute. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a great, great story, Regan. Do you have any other stories for us? Do you? <laughs> no. Um, I do see that you didn't have any questions that are on there. And yeah. Uh, I think that with a lot of people that are looking at IUPUI, the understanding of the difference between IU degrees and uh, Purdue University degrees is enormous for them to understand. And you did a great job of having a good panel to field some questions to give them an idea of what it's like, not just in Indianapolis, but also here uh, on the campus that is shared by both the universities and even how the university does form some unions outside of getting a job. I think that's a good touch to have with that as well. I do wanna thank the uh, participants that signed up for this evening and those that will watch the video going forward once it's available on the website that is inacac.org so you can go back and see the video the excuse me the slides that were shared along with contact information uh, there are additional sessions that can be signed up for that will be going on for the next week and a half with other universities across the united states and some universities that are abroad when i end this the webinar there's a brief survey to help us better hone how we deliver information to you and what you may be interested in learning going forward. I do thank you again, and I hope that you all have a great evening. I appreciate all of you for joining us from the Heron School of Art and have a great evening.